Hi there. Thank you for downloading and listening to and watching the Lean Into Art Cast. This is a show where a couple of visual storytellers get together and take on various topics that tend to cross your path when you go on this adventure of communicating with images. We think hard about it, so you will too. My name is Jersey Jones. I am a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is... Hey, I'm Rob Stenzinger. I am a user experience designer, and I make interactive things, and I teach about that stuff too. Good to see you again, Rob. Nice to be back yeah, for another... Another live stream slash podcast slash video cast, whatever name, pick your flavor. It's, it's uh, people broadcasting about talking about art. Um, mm. And, you know, I want to just dive right into like, like framing this one up because like it, it, I realized that what we're going to talk about today addresses a very um, concrete and specific piece of advice that is handed out to anybody who uh, decides to be entrepreneurial and put their work into the world as a means of generating interest, leads, networking, audience, customers. And that is put something out there every day. Hmm. I was about to guess search engine optimization. <laughs> Big stuff for robots. Make robots happy. <laughs> They fetch humans. That's the magic. Podcast over. <laughs> I forgot about that one. SEO. I gotta have my website be SEO ready. Uh, it's a thing. It's important. I'm, you know, that's as close. I, I'm getting. Um, oh, you know, I, I'm being harsh designer guy when I when I say that. It's uh, it, it is attention. Or like, um, right. But uh, no, I. What? It's it was, it's a cheap shot for an SEO joke. <laughs> Uh, I'm not above this kind of thing. <laughs> we we all we all have that thing that makes us grumpy, right? We all have that one thing that makes us just like, ah, you threw a rock at the at the sleeping giant. Now he's gonna come out. He's gonna kick things around for a little while. Go back to sleep. Um, but but yeah, this but see, in this this shipping every day thing is one of those things that when I was first starting out, I was like, that sounds great. That ain't manageable. I can't do it. I have to find another way. Um. Now, I've messed around with different things over the years, right? Like different projects where I would ship things on a more like manageable, smaller, more frequent basis. Uh, and I've had mixed results. But I don't think I ever sat down and really thought about what my goals were for doing it. It was just like, well, this is just what you do. That's all. You know, that person who has a lot, a big audience and has a publishing contract, they, they said to do that. So just do it, right? So I am... Very excited and eager to dive into this discussion with you to figure out how you're thinking about it because this is something you're doing right now, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, uh, I am, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's multifaceted. There isn't like some you know simple uh, you know advice. There isn't uh, what survival bias where where a survivor you, you go through something and you think well everyone else needs to go through something because this therefore that okay um you know, no it's just i think it'll be fun to chat about with you because um you know i have uh i'm doing this on purpose it's it's goal related um it's 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 like a goal formed out of um a variety of things strategy feelings and i don't know it's 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 happening so I'm, I'm and I'm glad we can talk about it. It's funny. I mean, it's only like what 14 days so far, so far 14 posts. But, uh, uh, but you know, I, I, I mean, I don't need more reason. It feels I want, weird. I want to do check-ins though, like beginning, middle, end. Like that's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Like I want to like 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 a researcher come here and go like, all right, let's time, survey time. How are we feeling now? Okay, you're, you're like two weeks in. Now let's check in six months from now or five months from now, right? Let's check in like 10, 11 months from now. And we'll watch Rob as he looks like he drank from the wrong cup in Indiana Jones 3. Exactly. I'm the sandwich. I'm the, I'm the pristine sandwich in the bag, in the, in the little plastic wrap right now. And you're going to put me in the, put me in the drawer. Check oh. on me every once in a while. You're yes. That's you're going to look like Homer's sandwich that he wouldn't relinquish after six months. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that's, that said, I'm fresh. <laughs> fresh sandwich. <laughs> the music indicates we're now fully into the episode. We're actually going to start talking about it and stop dancing around the idea. So, um, right, like, what? Let's see, where do we begin? Um, 
So basically what I, I hope to do is just like interview you for a little while, Rob. Uh, but I know that like you're going to turn it around and pitch it back at me and ask for my reflections as I'm asking for your reflections. But the, the conceit is that I'm starting off by I'm leading the, the, the interview. Um, so given that I've opened with this idea that this is commonly distributed advice, ship every day. What made you finally de decide to do this? I'm sure it wasn't as simple as, well, they tell me to do that. That's all. Because you've been doing this stuff a long time, too. Why now? What Can you point to any events, thoughts, observations, uh, experiences that made you say, now is the time for me to try it? I think a, a huge part of this is emotional. It's not, it's, it, it is a non-trivial factor. Um, functionally, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, it's, let's see. So I've practiced, um, writing and drawing for a long time and I have these abilities I could use. I could do more creation than consumption. I could do something. I know the, so the possibility is there, but the reason to move is, is a combination of, of things. It's, it's, there's a common, there's a set of goals and projects that are related to, um, like incre incremental daily effort, doing something is vastly better than, than doing nothing. And no matter what that something is, um, it's, it's a, it's, it's a thread to pull on. It's a, it's a, it's a habit. It's a practice. It's, um, it's a combination of skill use and skill building at the same time. So I, I need, I want to write a book this year. I have workshops to write. I have, um, I'm, I, and then I know myself, that's a big part of it too, where adding this, this, some kind of quirky, frequent challenge accountability thing makes me more engaged. And I felt the frustration enough of last year where I decided to do it. I decided to say, it's, it's time to, to, to do a daily thing again, because I've done this before. I, and, and it's been what, f I guess five years, six years, cause it was the beginning of 2015 that okay. I did the unblocking project. And the reason for that was to, to sort of feel unstuck, feel, you know, like connecting to the public again, where, um, I, uh, uh, you know, you having a day job, um, satisfying in a variety of ways, but, part of the process of that, you know, that plate, the, where I worked, the culture and whatnot, it, it's a large organization that doesn't really have a lot of, um, you can be disconnected from your audience a lot when you're working in a, in a big machine and, uh, and, and the, and to feel the satisfaction of doing something and the call and response of create a thing, hear about the thing and all that, like, I missed it a lot. And so 2015, I said, I'm going to put out, it was a drawing for the most part. Yeah. I'd write a little bit sometimes, but unblocking every day of 2015, put something out there. I remember that, you know, experience can help with, uh, you know, I feel like I have a credit, I have data that helps inform, uh, um, what I think is, um, and I've been doing a lot of writing about this stuff, but like to, to create a credible decision, you can make decisions without, um, data. You can make decision without emotions. Um, but it's harder, right? And it's harder to, to feel like you, you have a, 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 a like a, a, a stance that, that makes sense. That's making the most of what you understand about yourself and the world and whatnot. Um, and Jer Jersey's scrolling right now through unblocking posts and, uh, and you know, they ranged all over the place, uh, but just sketches and doodles and sometimes digital paintings and all that. Um, so I know I can finish a tiny thing every day, but then add up to 2020 and like roughly the past couple of years, I've been doing a lot of writing in private and, you know, journaling, reflecting, um, free writing, all kinds of stuff. And I know that I can get words out. Um, and Hey, there's the birth of, uh, two, <laughs> oh, pizza, two team. pizza team. Yeah. Right there. Coming soon to an agile theater near you. Oh, this is yeah. February 9th, 2016. 
Yeah, to, for, to describe it in the audio, um, the unblocking was a bunch of different kinds of doodles, drawings, and paintings uh, based on what was moving you during that day or what was inspiring you, what you had bandwidth for. Um, but hmm. now, I think you're leading up to, we get to this part. This is at interactive-storyteller.com. Uh, go to the blog link. You're doing writing every day. Mm-hmm. You're writing a blog post every day. And typically doing a new illustration, but it varies. Sometimes I'll take a photograph. Sometimes I'll, uh, and they're really rapid doodle in illustrations, but there, there's something above the production quality of unblockings, average post. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, I, it's a, it's, you know, it's putting work into the world. It's testing the hypothesis where, um, what can I do frequently and go through a full creative cycle? Cause I think of creative, creative cycles as you have the ones that are like near instant, you have the ones that are fast, you have ones that are like, um, more effortful, take a whole day, take a couple days and you have ones that are bigger and bigger investments. And so, so I had been doing all this investment in skill building and practice, but not really getting the full cycle of, of putting something into the world. So I had that annoyance and tension that just, I feel as a creator, um, I have the, uh, specific project urge annoyance, right? Where it's like, I want to say this. I don't just want to say something. I have that feeling too. I want to say this particular thing. Also creative demons prevent me from saying this particular thing without great, uh, turmoil. <laughs> and so navigating that and practicing navigating it all, you know, more frequently, whatever, lower the risk, right? So use skills I've built. It feels good to use your skills, right? And, um, uh, and do this frequently and do this in a way that helps avoid personal, my, my own personal creative demon issues and stuff, or at least, uh, get better at all that stuff, uh, to achieve specific outputs and, and to eventually have like a variety of posts that will add up to portions of, of a book and, and, and other things to just be a participant in the, um, common cares and community of different thoughts and stuff I, I believe in and show up. And that's more than, uh, that's a more satisfying life for me is an, as also it's a giant pain and it's frustrating, but it's more satisfying in the trade. I don't know. Like did that. So, yeah, so it's I'll not tell you like what a, I'm hearing in there. What I'm hearing, yeah, what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing in there, Rob, is what I dearly wish I would hear more in advice and tutorial discussions is you're doing the thing that only a very um, precious few of my teachers did when I was growing up is you're connecting me with why this is important to do. And because like the, the when the advice is given, it, it, historically, I'm, I'm talking about my contact with when this advice was rolled out of ship every day. It's like, you'll build an audience and then you can monetize the audience. I'm like, well, I, I get that that is something that has been tested and proven in other scenarios. Hasn't been tested and proven in my scenario. I don't know for sure that that's going to happen. And I don't really feel like I have a ton of control over whether or not that happens. So Sell me on what else I get out of this. Are there any other benefits that come out of this? Well, what I heard and what you said is it serves a desire, uh, a desire to make something and have that that feedback loop of people in, in reacting to it uh, almost instantaneously, you know, well, more, more rapidly and more immediately than when, like you pointed out, when you're working in a big organization. You know, I work in big organizations too, and sometimes it can feel very like a big chasm between you and the people that you're administering or, or, or serving, right? Um, so there's that. There's also, it feels good to apply your skill. That's, that's like a, a, a fundamental truth, right? It's like, it's like, it just feels good to do things and to do them with like some level of proficiency and to watch your proficiency grow. Like that is a value in and of itself. It's its own reward, right? Um, and then you're generating material that could potentially become other things, right? Um, you're committing to, by committing to this thing, you're, you're committing time to generate uh, drafts or practice that will lead to more proficiency, uh, more raw material for making more artifacts to put into the world, right? 
So right there, three more layers on top of you build an audience that you can monetize it. Right. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is really like a lot of that is resonating with me, Rob. So, uh, that's, that's all great. And that that's th these, I'm grateful that you're defining and we're not defining you're charting the different areas that we can all on our own comb to determine whether or not we want to do something like this. What's in it for us? Well, there's more than just that external validation or, or uh, external reward. There's other kinds of rewards we can think about too. Um, so, it's, and then when I, and yeah. It doesn't come without cost. It doesn't come like, you know, cost or consequence free where you're just, you know, it's, it's, you're introducing another thing into your day and uh, finding, you know, working through those logistics has, you know, that's, that's a real matter to deal with. Mm -hmm. And whatever it is that you do that, that this defines, like, this is a worthy thing to, to post or share, whatever that is in you, however easy or not, uh, that's, uh, certainly a matter for me. Um, and it, <laughs> and it varies where it's like, um, if I'm trying to post something that is, like some of the stuff I care the most about is the hardest to post. And some of the stuff I care a lot about is that easy to post. So, you know, it's so, uh, it, you know, you're facing your own stuff. It, and that's, I mean, that's a big part of it for me. So. Well, mm. you, you mentioned uh, Natalie Goldberg, uh, right here, her book, Writing Down the Bones, in one of your recent blog posts. And that mm -hmm. inspired me to go back and uh, get another book of hers from the library, which was um, mm. Wild Mind which was like a follow-up to writing down the bones. Oh, and, nice. and I was listening to it this morning when I was on my, my what passes for a run when, when you have my level of fitness. Um, and one of the things she was saying in there that I, I just grabbed onto, I thought that this is really good. And it, and it really like sort of harmonizes with other things I've been listening to lately. Like the, uh, this union life podcast is if you're not staring down some kind of monster, like internal monster, when you're, when you're writing, you're not, really doing the work of writing. You're not going to write anything that really counts, right? Like there's like, there's a wrestling with some kind of inner forces that has to happen for you to know that you're doing something that matters. Um, and this is, this is also something Gene Yang said uh, when he was at CXC last year, is he said like the projects that frighten you are the ones that you should do, right? Because if you do the things that are safe and don't, don't challenge you, you're probably just going to write around the things that matter to you and it will be less interesting to do and the work won't be as good. And that, that feels very appropriate and true. Right. Um, and anyway, I yeah. have a hunch as to why that might be having, you know, faced my creative demons that I always thought would go away eventually, but never ever do. <laughs> um, the, uh, <clears throat> It's that that is an interesting other kind of advice that seems kind of just picked up off the shelf, like write the, mm -hmm. you know, right from the heart, right? What you, what you know, all these things you hear commonly and write the stuff that that you're the most um, like, you know, scared of writing or that really you know, is, is difficult for you to write. And I think my my guess is for that, it's it's that you're choosing to find a way to talk about things in the human experience that will transmit because of how tricky it is and how skilled you have to figure out, um, you know, like to get this out of your head and convey it to someone else, right? Like to do that trick is to watch someone fight their monsters, you know, and, and not to, that that has to be the main topic, but when someone pulls off that, you know, that article, that story, and it's from, you know, that kind of level of, of care, there, the, it's detectable. It's, it's, it's like, I don't know, like it, this, the skill that it causes to have that care and to pro provide it and to navigate one's own great concerns is, um, it's its own kind of skillful act that mm -hmm. we can see and feel yeah, and, and resonate with as, uh, as the meta, as part of how an idea gets transmitted. Eh. That was not an easy thing to try to define. <laughs> no, I, I, I think I think that your 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 instincts are pointing in the right direction on that, right? Because like you could take 
story structure. I'm teaching a middle school course right now, part of a, a, a residency I'm doing in a middle school, and I'm teaching them st- like how cartoonists do story structure. And I talk about you know introduction, conflict, twist, resolution, and, all, and exploring those ideas in detail. And that could easily lead you to believe like, okay, you can hang any detail on that and it'll work. Well, in a perfunctory sense, yes, right? Uh, it will work in the sense that you've created something with like a logical progression. Will it matter to anybody is a whole other thing. And I think like getting to like what matters to you, untangling that, finding language for it and finding a way to communicate that so that it's transmissible to other people. That's that's the part we're kind of pointing toward right there. So, OK, mm. so now you've, you've sort of pre answered my question about goals. Like what were the explicit goals and are there any emerging goals? What I'm hearing there is generate material for potential future projects, whether it's a workshop or a book. Um confronting my own uh, inner demons in a way to like help me level up at that engagement. The demon's never going to go away, but maybe I can be more skillful at encountering and engaging with it. Um, any other it, uh, goals that are emerging out of doing this for you? Uh, you know, let's see. I'm, there's a lot of, let's say more granular goals that, that are, uh, that are, that are, ex- like like rapidly creating title art, um, things that that I mean they're they're pretty mechanical and part of the process and but they're things I'm aware of as I'm going through and repeating this where I'm like okay, this is I need to get faster at these these different things and and it's uh, I think some some comic artists that who who pr- produced a lot of pages I think point to this as well where it's like that frequent practice is good but and getting the like the volume of output at the certain quality um and all that it's a um uh it's it creates it creates opportunity it creates opportunity for for well professional things to to bundle things as products to to sell to you know reach more people and all that kind of stuff about all the things i care about and i guess one of the goals is too is I want a presence in the, in the world and in, of all the different things I care about in art, right? I have a really hard time showing up to only be a UX designer. I have a really hard time showing up to only be a game designer. I have all, you know, like, or, um, our cartoonist or a thing like that. I feel like I am, I can wear that hat and wholeheartedly and, and skillfully do a thing related to that, but it's not all that I am. And the stuff is showing up in this place though, because doing this daily means that I can have all like subtle signal, big signal, all kinds of things I care about can just can, can go here and they don't have to get just put into a folder on my hard drive or into a post into my day one journal and just, and never get shared when I know there's something in here that is shareable. That is, um, that is that I, I care about a lot and I know that it's transmitted, but but you have to put it out there in order for it to be observed. Mm-hmm. So um, I get to be um, my whole creative me out in this blog. Mm. Yeah. There's something about like finally giving yourself permission to show up as your whole self to things, right? And like it, your whole professional self or just like your whole self. Um, I've had th- these moments in my life where I'm like, you know, what? I'm just going to show up as me and I'm not going to, cause like it's, I think it's like, it's very, it's an instinctual thing to like tailor our interactions with people based on the signals that we get with them. Right. It's like, it's hardwired into us as tribal creatures to, to do that and to not do that and to show up and be like, this is what I am. And like, th- there's something that feels like, especially for, I speak only for myself as a, um, I don't want to say recovering. I want to say struggling to recover people pleaser. I show up and I'm like, hey, everybody, I really want to help. I want everybody to like what I'm doing, you know. Uh, it's it's really, it feels like like the courage of a firefighter for me to show up as my full self to anything. Oh, <laughs> mm, mm. Like the courage of an eighth grader crossing a dance floor to ask a partner to dance. Like that's like the kind of courage I have to summon up to show up as my full self to anything. Dang, <laughs> that's intense. That is, and but it sure does resonate. Where, yeah, because I mean, it, it makes sense. Not all contexts. I mean, you show up. Per, you know, per, uh, professional context enables a lot of things for us to collaborate with. You know, hopefully, a whole variety of of folks that that we wouldn't normally get to because of what our funding and 
recruiting, all this kind of stuff. Anyway, um, the, uh, but then some of those contexts you, I don't know, it just, it, it hurts sometimes to, to not let out other ideas and not that, mm-hmm. not that only my ideas matter, not that I, you know, it's like, I, I'm a know-it-all or need to, you know, push an agenda, but to, to be in a, in a, in a room, um, that, you know, especially if you do it for a long time where you're in a certain role and it's like, well, for instance, I, I mean, I've worked at a gig where it's like, I've been coding since I've been in second grade and I've gone through different, you know, certain, certain practices and challenges where I, you know, I can wear that hat, um, pretty well, but I've been in rooms where it's like the secret coder. I'm not, I can't talk about it because that's it's not the culture of the, of the room or the collaboration, even though it might add a little something here and there. Exactly. Um, yeah. No, yeah. I had this experience recently where I was meeting somebody over Zoom who is in the comics industry. They know who I am. But when they saw my mic in the Zoom, they're like, do you do a podcast? And I'm like, everybody, look at the episode number on this episode. Right. And this is this is like my f- third or fourth outing doing, you know, podcasting. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do podcasting. I guess I don't talk about that in certain circles. That's amazing to me, you know. So like things like that can happen where it's like I am not transmitting the value that I have to offer to the world by curtailing that at those aspects of myself, depending on what company I'm in. And why carry that habit back with you to a project like this? Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, OK, you may have a particular product or thing that that needs a lot of specificity and that can be good. But this isn't that, right? A place like a blog to get these things out. I could have themed this blog only user experience design, only like truly interactive things under the banner of interactive storyteller.com, right? Interactive dash storyteller. Um, but it's, it, you know, anyway, it, this is, it, it, it fills, um, it fills a need for me. And um, uh, yeah, we'll see we'll see how it goes. I mean, I don't have a prediction that, um, in particular with that other than like, I think more variety will come out. It'll be easier to meet my daily deadline. And, um, that should make it more nourishing as a practice as a, as opposed to, you know, punishing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just like when you say punishing, I instantly imagine like that, that like, uh, angry coach figure in your life saying like, this is what this is what you got to do. You stayed up late. Now you're gonna pay for it. <laughs> you played games. Yeah. How, how you feel about those games now? Get in there and make that make that work. You know, it's like that <laughs> sure. that demanding. You know, like you're doing this as penance for something else, which is like mm-hmm. that's that's not a fun place to to hang out. Um. Now I actually had in my notes like I I sort hmm. of like started designing buckets based on the content you're creating, but I, I am hesitant to even talk about that now because what you talked about is so liberating and so free. It's like the, maybe it's not even, maybe it's counterproductive to start describing areas of content that you're developing because you're only two weeks in and this is, a, you're in exploratory mode right now, right? Um, I actually really like the buckets you created though. Oh, so, okay. So, right, so... Okay. Categories can be limiting or they could be liberating. Um, categories can help you group things and make sense, discover a pattern and that pattern can be a tool. You could ignore it. You could make use of it. And so I, I am, uh, I am stocked up. I have tools in every pocket for this project. I don't want (laughs) to like ignore a tool because I want to do a post (laughs) for every day. I don't want to, I don't want to miss it. And I want them to like, <laughs> like reasonably good, you know? Yeah. Uh, what are those so, Scott E vests? You have the Scott E vest on. Or... I've got Scott E vest <laughs> layers. <laughs> For those who so. don't know, Scott E vest, they're, they're tactical pants and tactical vests that had like pockets inside of pockets inside of pockets. It was like a, uh, a sure, Rob Liefeld jackets. inception. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were, Yeah. Gosh, I did feel like a '90s comic when I was wearing my skirt. <laughs> um, so okay, well let's let's just take like a couple minutes to go through the buckets yeah. and just react to them because then maybe yeah. we can talk about in the second half how you're managing this practice and reflecting on the costs that it's incurred and how you're you know negotiating with those costs and how you, and and what 
uh, capacities you are calling upon and maybe what capacities you're discovering in doing this. Um, so how about, okay, how about we go through the buckets, then we'll do that. What do you say? Okay. Yeah, okay. Sound, sounds excellent. All right, let's do this. Okay, so I, I noticed that going through the blog, um, and I'll pull up the, the blog, you have a number of posts that fall into the bucket of, I made this. Here's the thing I made, right? And that would be like your mysterious yet happy trees. Um, you also had an early post about making songs, or generate a song and visuals from text based on some, uh, you know, some code that you wrote uh, a number of years ago, actually. Uh, and I think I know what this was for uh, or what, what, what inspired this, this uh, bit of code back then. And then you have philosophy, like who I am and how I see the world. Because like suddenly we get to this post about the song that you grew up with when you were a little mm -hmm. kid that your wife, uh, Kate Shields Stenzinger, didn't recall. Uh, and you were like, what? How could you not know this song? And so you, then you kind of like ruminate on like what that song meant to you. And so it's like a little bit of like expressing this is who I am as a person. And then very recently, let me see if I can find it. The three questions to ask users. Where is it? Um, Keep going. Up. Yeah, there here go. we go. Yeah, three kinds of questions to ask your users. And this is more like how I think about my work. That's how that felt to me. That like the 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 mm. the, the thesis is that here is an example of how I think about things. It's um, a user experience mindset um, writing exercise in disguise. Mm. Mm. Some will be some will be straightforward, you know, this is clearly, you know, along this topic and continuing to reinforce it. But like some of that will is it's um it's articles to support um acting on that idea. And and briefly, so U UX mindset is is um is a book concept I'm working on and continuing to, you know, grow the idea roughly that um you know this is something I've been working on for for years where so many of the tools of user experience are borrowed from all kinds of different places. And you can, uh, you don't have to be an industry expert to make a difference um, by just starting to think about your audience more and including them in how you decide stuff. So it's really just the thinking about your business and your org and your team and what have you that makes a big, big ma difference. Like it, it's a change where, where it's like whatever was driving the choices before. You include that. I call that user experience mindset. And that's the, um, you know, that's the topic I'm trying to, you know, turn into a book. Um, so I'm always thinking of like, well, what, what could I do? I've got an outline. I've got things that I could, uh, that, that are hunches and things that are well thought out. So I'm exploring through the writing. So, and then you have another thing you're exploring is I would call these uh, tinkering slash fixing slash modifying posts where it's like, okay, I'm going to talk about this Kawaii K4 keyboard and bringing it back to life and like what that process and experience was like. And then even like, and there's that great cover. It's like, what? Yeah, this 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 very this feels like it, it's from another time, right? It's like learn it right the first time. You it's you struggle a harsh like... book. It's <laughs> not like you're it, yeah, the coach voice that you had earlier, the 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 harsh coach stereotype is all over this book cover. There's someone <laughs> liter like just squeezing cartoon choking uh, their their musical instrument. You know? Yeah, but that's not how you make music. What's happening? <laughs> yeah, this Why is not this person residue. so mad at their keyboard. Why? Yeah. Anyway, and and I'm like, it's not like I had another option when I bought it. So I was like, <laughs> there's no manual and I don't know anything about this. So I need something. And this was pre-internet. So, <laughs> anyway. well, so I, I mean, bought that, that book. That also tells you of the time it came from, right? Like where, where our relationship with like what, what mastery actually means uh, was very different back then. Um, mm. So, but I, yeah, I just, I, when I got to that cover, I was like, yeah. And then I saw that you, you actually had a little line on it. Like this whole cover is a mood. Even if I'm sure <laughs> it's stuck, I've never felt like this about my K4. Um, but then, yeah, like, like, you know, resuscitating uh, an old power supply. Um, so like that fixing, modifying, tinkering is one of the other buckets. And then another uh, bucket that, I felt like with like, this is like absolutely the Rob I know is this one. Um, this falls into like reflection. I'm going to occasionally step back 
and look at the thing I'm making, i.e. this blog, and reflect on what it's doing to me, how I feel about it, how I feel about the work, what it's like to do this thing. It's like, so it's like, once again, I'll just like sound these out out loud. Like there's an, I made this category, who I am category, philosophy, fixing, modifying, tinkering, and then reflecting on all of the, the things that I make. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, what is your reaction to that in, and having observed that? Well, uh, having a prompt to, to start writing is fantastic. It's like one of the, um, like doing the practice of like you mentioned, like writing down the bones. I don't know if we're getting into second half stuff, but like, it's like, these are very functional as, um, catalysts, uh, like a place to, to a stepping stone somewhere to, to get me, uh, from nothing to something and start reacting to something. That's a, mm -hmm. that's, that's where a prompt can really help you. Um, someone asks you a question Th these imply, I can think of questions that these, pr these buckets imply. Mm. And I can then start to answer those questions in, in writing. And now there's something in it. It's, there are words. There's not no words. There's some words. And now <laughs> I can add some more words. This would be a thing where like, like peer review of the stuff that you're doing, getting some feedback from some people around you is like enormously helpful. Like just having one person say, I noticed that this is something that your work tends to be about. And like, what, really? I didn't know that. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that, that was a huge influence on my development as an artist. Um, anyway, uh, so how it's about, yeah, it's bucket. Well, I'm glad it was helpful. Uh, so how about we take a break? Thanks to people who make the show possible. And then we'll come back and talk about how the heck you're engaging with this two weeks in, how you feeling about it, how are you managing it, how are you thinking about managing it going forward. Let's talk about that word capacity again. Um, so for those who are wondering, like, if I want to try this. Um, so does that sound good? <laughs> yeah, okay. sounds excellent. All right, we're going to come back in a minute and 30 seconds and talk about those things. But first, we have to thank some people who make this show possible. And those are the people who support us on Patreon. Yes, Patreon. Dot com slash Alina Tuart is the site. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you believe in Rob and Jersey and what we make here at Alina Tuart, you can support us on an ongoing basis for as little as a dollar a month. You can also do a one-time contribution and cancel at the end of the month, by the way. You can do that. Go avail yourself of the behind-the-scenes content and then check out. But I want to thank five people who have been supporting us on a regular basis. So first up, Greg Horvath. Thank you, Greg, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Greg on Twitter at IGMHorv77. And Cameron Callahan. Thank you, Cameron. Longtime supporter of the show. You can find Cameron on Twitter at Cam Callahan. And Sarah Lutfi. Thank you, Sarah. You can find Sarah on Instagram at twisty.tree.studios. And Stephen Stonebush. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, you can find Stephen on uh, Instagram at sstonebushart. And finally, Catherine Sugru. Thank you, Catherine. You can find Catherine on Twitter at Katsugru, K-A-T-S-O-O-G-R-O-O. -O -O. You can join them all at patreon.com slash lean into art. You will find all the shows we make, as well as the extra leans, the shows we record only for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts become an open mic thread where you can talk about whatever you want in a safe space with fellow leaners. And also get you access to the Patreon section of the Lean Into Art Discord, patreon.com slash lean into art. Thanks to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. <sighs> All right. So I, 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 I'm feeling uh, very like elevated and inspired, but I want to keep pushing in that direction. So it, it, it doesn't get old, Rob. <laughs> mm -mm, no, darn right. That's, that's some, that's a feeling. Uh, <laughs> Love that dang song. Oh, uh, uh, I know. It is, it is a pretty awesome theme song. And I mean, I just, I just love that line. And I remember one time when like there was a very, um, uh, a parent of a student of mine who was watching the student teach me how to do something. And they were like, who's teaching who here? And I said, you teach me and I teach you. It's in the song. <laughs> they're like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so managing this, how do you make this manageable, Rob? Because like you said, it, this incurs a cost. Nothing happens without some kind of a cost. And now you're incurring a cost every day and mm -hmm. you're doing this 365 days. This is not just Monday through Friday, right? This is Saturday, right. Sunday. So mm -hmm. how are you doing it? 
And what is it? Okay, let me let me start by I'm going to ask some very Rob like questions if you don't mind. I, I was like I was as I was reading your blog, I was like getting this voice of like a Rob like voice in my head, and so I was like, okay, I think <laughs> if I were to interview him about this in a way that he would interview me, how would he do it? And I, and I said, I, the first question is, what? <laughs> That's some deep perspective taking. If I were to go undercover and put on a Rob costume, yeah, and would they? Boy, how can I? How can I pass the interview? Yes. Yes. This is a, this is a good plan. So, so to get at this idea of managing rather than just say, how do you do it? Um, and say, what mm -hmm. does it look like when you are writing a post? Mm -hmm. Describe what it looks like. What does it feel like? Um, let's see. I, I'm a little bit no holds barred about it. I have, uh, a pretty chaotic schedule that we've talked about, you know, a few episodes ago, there are recurring patterns though. Right. So I've found that there's a window of time that I can work out in the morning. I can actually use that time to do a little bit of writing and a workout and every, um, it's, I write like I'm farming. I think like, like a made up farm sim in my head. I, I have ideas that I go with and, and what, whatever comes out, comes out. And then I'm, then I look at what, what happened? Like, what did I put on the page? And I'm like, well, where is it? So, um, that's probably could probably dig more into that. Um, set that aside, but like what it looks like is I check my, I'm checking in on my farm of stuff. And I'm, I'm like, I've got a few articles in progress. I've got a few prompts. I've got a few buckets and questions I want to ask myself. I've got a book outline. So I've got all these things where I'm, I'm like, Hey, who's, you know, who do I, who, whose question do I want to answer here? I'm looking around like, like what, what on my, my farm, you know, like meta metaphorical, um, writing, uh, challenge farm, uh, what's speaking to me, what looks like it needs something. Right. And then I tend to it and, um, uh, but I do something and that's, that's, that's the key is like, so sit down to do some writing and, and let it out. And I, and I'm currently working pretty multi-platform. Um, if I have a very, oh, where's that? Um, so on my phone, I am not a phone typer. Um, I will use my phone to do uh, dictation and then, uh, transcription, right? So I do use the otter.ai service and that's good, but it's not the greatest formatted text and stuff. It's a good place to brainstorm and get some things out and say, all right, well in my farm, I've got some, um, transcri transcribed ideas to go review. And oftentimes I can pluck out from there useful stuff to then, go further with, but it's typically typing. So I can do that at, on my tablet or my phone or my desktop. Right. And I work in Markdown. So it's plain text and it's synchronized across different platforms. And, uh, almost always I'm using a Markdown app with a Dropbox synced folder. And then, so it doesn't matter which machine I'm at, just get comfortable, start typing. And, um, but I want to mention this keyboard because it's uh, and there's a there's a variety of clones of it and whatnot. This is a weird like thing where it was 20 bucks or so. And uh, it, this thing is like four or five years old and it's got it had some miles on it. Um, so right pre pandemic, this was the, my my secret for getting a lot of writing done in a in a coffee shop kind of thing. Um, or I'm that person who. You know, at a, at a meeting, we'll set out my my deck of note cards, my phone, and this, and I'm just drawing and writing. You know, tick, 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 you know, getting things down all you know all the way through. I'm, you know, I guess I have a scribe habit. But um, <laughs> anyway, this keyboard, like, so finding a comfortable way to type and get the words out is really important. So working ergonomically, all that kind of stuff, because I, like I said, it's kind of no holds barred. I've got a few predictable places, you know, where and when it happens, and this is. Um, like, you know, I'm thinking about the, the stuff I'm using to type. I'm also thinking about managing this, this resource of the farm of, of different ideas to be able to, um, 
you know, tend to. And then I'm looking at who's the candidate for today, right? So I am like that. I'm like, wh- all right, who's almost ready? Because mm. someone's going out today. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> so just real quick to back up just for the yeah. people who are listening in audio, what is the name of that keyboard? Um, oh yeah, yeah. Um, it is, uh, oh, it's Dicto Pro D I C T O P R O. So and what it, what it looks like is it, it's like about the size of a, a large wallet and it, it flips open like, like a wallet and then it's a keyboard yep. and I'm, it looks like it's a rechargeable keyboard. It's rechargeable. And it's, it has um, good response on the keys and it's pretty ergonomic because it has the split uh, thing. So like when you're, when I'm sitting there, I don't have to twist my wrist to type on a, on a little rectangle, right. Mm. And, and shape my hand for the rectangle. It's all It's, it's doing a little bit of the work where it's, it's arranging the keys so my hands can reach them in a way that it's not twisting my wrists. Mm. That's a subtle feature of this thing that is, um, well, I, one of the reasons why I like it a lot. So um, Dic- yeah, the Dicto Pro. Not trivial. Uh, if it folds up to like this, like maybe the thickness of like a a, a recent uh, smartphone, it's pretty. Looks pretty thin. Yeah, I mean, this right. is you know. So here's the here's the wallet. Here's a very thin, uh, cheap Android phone I use for for testing and for controlling my um, uh, OBS scenes. Mm. But um, okay, you know. So yeah, that's roughly. So, okay. So what I'm hearing in there is like you're, you're finding the time and part of that time in the writing is looking at other drafts of things that you have written, other mm-hmm. topics and prompts that you've g- generated through just making things like this very project, like lean into art, like, you know, um, things like art sound off. I'm sure there's like a, a long trail of little signals of things that you care about that were left in all that stuff that you can go back mm-hmm. in line. Certainly. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, uh, that's a little bit of what, why I feel it's a reasonable, um, it, it makes this possible in, in a way because it's, it's like, I've, I have this a variety of things that, that I, I'm not at a loss for what I care about talking about mm-hmm. and for, for ideas within the stuff that I care about that have, um, something to them like that, that have really connected with folks in some way or, um, that clarified something for me. Like I felt a little bit of an aha talking something through with you or what, whatnot. It's like, there's, 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 uh, there's plenty of, of stuff to, to look at. It's not a re- requirement I think for anyone doing this, but it certainly can help. Um, but you don't want to get lost in it too. I mean, it's a huge bias for action baked into this project. I mean, so what it looks like is, oh crap, I have to get something done. (laughs) And that's, that's a portion of it. Um, and, uh, so, I mean, you've got quite a body of content out there, Mm -hmm. um, things you've created and whatnot. And, and, uh, like you, you said you could mine for, for Mm -hmm. material and ideas. Um, is this something you're thinking about doing a daily, uh, well, I mean, no, I, I, well, I don't know. I mean, like, of course that when you made your, um, when you planted your stakes said, this is a thing I'm going to do, I'm like, oh, that'd be, that's, that sounds like fun. That sounds like an interesting challenge. It also sounds like <laughs> I would look like I drank from the wrong cup in two weeks. Um, cause I, you, you know, <laughs> you know better than most people how crammed my schedule is for the next like three months. It's going to be pretty, pretty wild. Um, and so it's yeah. like, I don't want to introduce any more fragility into there and promise things that I can't keep. But I did make the commitment to, I am going to live stream while I'm drawing for two days a week, two hours a week, right? And it, it, it's part of my budget for comics work that needs to get done. And so that means I'm going to live stream. Um, I haven't been doing it on a regular basis, so I don't get huge audiences, right? I haven't been like generating that that heartbeat for in a consistent way where enough people know that, okay, Monday and Thursday at these times, he's going to be there. Right. So I get five, seven people showing up for these things. Right. Um, so I have to show up ready to be able to riff on ideas on the fly so that you're not just watching me draw and listening to my, you know, royalty free music playing in the background. And so I have got a habit of 
responding to what I'm looking at on the page as I'm drawing the thing. Like, so today I was, I was doing a Captain Seriously, uh, inking a Captain Seriously page, and I said, was inking the character of Dino Gator, and I got the, it, it, you know, the moment it occurred to me to tell the story of the generation of that character, how he was never meant to be anything terribly important to the story, and he's never been a featured character, but lo and behold, the school district was making mascots of the characters, like college uh, football team level mascot uh, costumes. You've seen them, Rob. Um, <laughs> and they, they put it to a vote. Which one do you want, kids? And the kids voted like, uh, it was like an overwhelming amount of kids said, we want Dino Gator as a costume. So that's a costume now, right? And it's like, it, it was just a, like a, a rumination of a story and then like trying to on the fly, trying to knit it into like, well, what's the observation? What's like the takeaway from that? What, well, what do, how do I feel about that now, right? Um, so like that kind of content, live content generation on the fly is something I am thinking about. Like, what do I look at in front of me to create something of interest and, and and really i mean like actually something that's that's interesting to listen to and not just like i like this pen because it's the best pen and you know the real pros use this pen um something stale and 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 flat like that um anyway <laughs> uh so, because I mean, because like, again, you're talking about like bringing your full self to this thing too. I think there's an element of like, as I was reading your blog post, like I said, I I heard you in my head. I could feel <laughs> your thinking in my head as I was reading it. Right. So, now it, and I would say not in all of them. Some more than others. In the ones where you were talking about your personal philosophy or your reflections, that's where your voice really came through. Where mm. ones like the keyboard one. I felt like, well, this feels like a story Rob would tell me, but I'm not hearing his voice as clearly in this one. I don't know. Mm. I don't know what that means. You know, it's just like, oh my somebody... gosh, that's awesome feedback, though. That's, <laughs> it is fascinating. It's, uh, huh, that's, I, I wonder, it, it's, I wonder if there's the, 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 oh, the sentiment and, and mm. the, the imbued emotional power the, of, of just, you know, things that greatly affect or concern me. And, uh, I wonder, I mean, I, you've mentioned this before it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, well, there you go. That's, that's part of the, part of the practice. Um, I wonder, um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to tune into that as, as yeah. I, as I continue. That's, that's pretty interesting food for thought because I wonder if it is me at full volume for all the time, a good thing, or, you know, it maybe where's like, where can I get intentional with that and treat it? I mean, honestly, treat it like good metal. It's like, bring you on a journey and be like, Oh, everything's fine. Trouble's coming. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Trouble's coming. And all of a sudden yeah. they all, we're, we're, you're going along. And, and then it's like, Oh no, it's like, it's the stakes get higher. And yeah. like, that's what a, a, a good metal song takes you somewhere. And I mm. want to do that with, with my writing, mm. but you know, I don't want to tire you out. So, Mm-hmm. Puzzles. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good food for uh, that, thought. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad that I'm glad these reactions are, are helping, uh, however they help. But I, I want to talk more about the, the systems. <laughs> Have you so you've got it sounds like you've got like a sort of informal system of gathering information for ideas for new posts. Have any systems started to emerge? I know you're only 14 days in, so like this is really early days, but like, have you noticed any habits forming in terms of, oh, that was helpful. I did it last time. I did it again. It was still helpful. I might do that again. I've, I've, the best pattern I, I noticed is, well, I, I think I put it in yesterday's article, which is, um, it's, it's this feeling of the criteria the threshold I'm trying to meet with a given post. And, um, and it's, it's part of how I like getting more specific about it. It's help. I think it will help me with that whole farming metaphor where I have ideas in progress, but then some are at a point where this is about to get, to be ready to, to go somewhere, right. Where I could, I could publish this one, or maybe there's a few. So which of these that feel close is the right one right now, right? I mean, what, what makes it this day's post, right? So I'll continue developing a system and looking for patterns. It's, you know, a pretty, um, you know, a natural habit for me. So I'm looking for patterns in the mechanics of, um, of doing this comfortably and also like meaningfully 
and w- skillfully to a point of this good enough to share quality, right? So I don't, um, I don't want to put myself through a ringer of every post has to meet this 20 checkbox list of criteria, um, and you know, m- be five stars at, at these different five pieces of criteria. I like it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, or like my definition of perfect, but, but it has to sort of, um, somehow be, be of that quality of like, I know I can, I can do this in a, in a way where I've, I've, I've expressed something clearly in a useful way that has, it's a little bit of baked in compellingness and selling the idea of, of like, this is important and here's why and stuff like that without being, you know, every post is a, is a sales pitch or what have you. Um, you know, capturing some essential feelings and, um, constructive ideas about a thing and whatever it might be. Um, Mm -hmm. so I'm looking for that. And so like that post talks about this thing. I, I've made up a word cause I've, I've, um, I've talked about, um, before, like I have this resistance of refinement where it's like, I have an idea that I know I can get across the finish line with it, but some things at the wrong, the wrong, the right idea at the wrong time, it will take great pain and immense effort hours versus minutes. If I'm doing it at the wrong time, I I've known this, I've known this for, cause I have made a lot of things. And, uh, so what I'm trying to do is, is play a little bit loose about which thing is the right thing at this time. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's the one I can get done in 20 minutes to an hour. I can do that mm-hmm. one today. And look at me go. And that's it. I don't have time to sit there and bask in the, I'm ready. Feels great to be ready. No, I've got to just go then. And I might be wrong. But if I'm moving and uh, observing that, uh, like, is this thing ready enough to share? Um, that's a mechanism. I don't know. And it's like, a, it, I'll get more, um, uh, I'll evolve that concept over time for sure. And, and think about the different stages of, of what I bring things through and what ideas are in what stages and all that stuff. But I'm not trying to burden this whole thing with extra process and, um, uh, just, yeah, I don't, I don't want to like create a Rube Gold or Goldberg machine of, of, um, you know, squirrels and bowling balls and candles and stuff. I, I, I want, you know, to have a pretty simple mechanism to just keep the process going. So I'm sure I'll do some kind of reflection and say, like, am I make like, where am I at with the big stuff? Am I making progress um, toward where I feel strong to do a book pitch for UX mindset? Right. Um, That'll be a that'll be a thing I'm going to look back at and say, like, well, I've avoided that topic for a month. Uh Oh, you know, who knows? I I think that's great. Yeah, I I think uh, what I'm hearing in there, too, is a trust in the process and a commitment to check in on it and see if the goals are being met and then being able to like uh, tweak it on the go. I think, I think that's, that's one of the things that it's, it's really hard until you've done this a couple of times. Uh, it's really hard to like believe in the process. You want to set it up to be successful. I want to make this thing so that like, there's like as little chance as possible of me not shipping a thing. And mm-hmm. It, again, it just keeps coming back to this idea of like I, I always think of that story when I put my first lesson plan in front of my my uh, teaching teacher and said, here it is. It's perfect. And she said, this is great. You know, you're not sticking to it. Right. And then I didn't know what that meant until I got in the classroom and saw that. Oh, yeah. Plans are meant to, to be adjusted. Um, well, because they are all forecasts, predictions. Yeah. Yep. Um, and. Yeah. Uh, Holding like that's useful, right? To to mm-hmm. to work within this framing of this this prediction of this plan, but to that to hold on to it too severely or specifically in whatnot, you're adding great cost to anything. Yep. Um, and maybe you're you set yourself up where you're optimized to do to pay that cost where you've made it cheap. Well, great. Um, but that that kind of mechanism takes investment to, to build. And I, that's what, that's why this blog isn't just, Oh, it's only this one topic with these, you know, quirky angles and takes it's, it's all the topics that, that come out of me. 
mm-hmm. with, you know, some filter that I have goals to. Um, um so I, last question, uh, and then I think it might be good to take a break and then uh, come back and talk about our two minute practice because we got more reflections to make yet. Um, so how are you capturing and reflecting on how this is affecting your work and meeting your goals? Do you have anything that you've been doing so far or anything that you're planning on doing in terms of like, I mean, th- this, th- this should come as a surprise to nobody that you are going to reflect on it. That's, that's a given, but I'm just curious, like if, if you've begun thinking about that yet, or if you've even started practicing it yet, and what does it look like when you're reflecting on the the project? Um, okay. So I'm trying to do the, like an every two week look back. Cause I think every week, um, like I've, I've created, I've, I think I've, maybe I can find the PDFs are, are still linkable. I'm sure where I have these, um, this, this sort of look back and look ahead, uh, set of prompts to say, well, how are things going? How could they go better? Um, what am I grateful for? That kind of thing. And I mean, that, that would include all the different things I'm working on. So this project is just, it's part of my, um, it, this is part of my professional commitments and professional goals. So it, it would get worked into, you know, every couple weeks reflection to see how things are, are going and check in and then think about where I want them to go next. So to, you know, look back, look ahead, how can I, you know, what can I do to support myself with where, where I want to go next? So, you know, that, that's, a, you know, being specific about that. And also, um, it does have a cost for the other goals I'm working on. It actually helps for some of the, some of the products, right? Obviously it helps a lot for the user experience mindset book, but, um, and it, and it can help for workshops if I'm, you know, topically aligned with it. Uh, but it also is off in other directions, right? So, um, I'm, yeah, I, I need to, as far as, um, specific, uh, goals of topics and things, I might add that rigor, but I don't have that right now. So then I would have, if I have that, um, you know, measure of, well, let's make sure five articles a, a month are about this bucket and, and two are about that and what have you. So that's possible because what I might end up needing to do is manage a demon, right? So creative demons are like, ha ha, it's fine. Talk about whatever you want every day. You're not talking about UX mindset, you fool. You <laughs> have to face me if you want to do that. And I'm like, fine. I, and then so if my count isn't going up in that topic, yeah, that's going to, mm. you know, I'll notice that. I will notice it just by checking in, but I may add a little bit of rigor to make sure I get the right counts in the different topics. We'll see. But what I'm that hearing in there, started. what I'm hearing in there is you are also taking like, paying attention to being gentle with yourself at the outset and like not putting up a whole bunch of, you know, um, structure ahead of time in order to ensure success. This is something I'm super busted on Rob is that like, I will often put a lot of extra work at the front of a project to protect me from failure. Right. Uh, it's so natural though. Yeah, It's totally natural. Absolutely. But I'm just saying like, I wanted to identify that you're not doing that. And I think that's awesome. And that's something to think about. If you do decide to commit to shipping something on a regular basis, is like so. For instance, uh, I have a conflict on my schedule with one of my live streams towards the end of the month, right? Oh, I guess I failed. I'm not sticking to my schedule of live streams. You know, it's like nope, that's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. Life's gonna happen. It's okay if you miss one or if you have to move it around. It's okay. Having having that flexibility is, uh, is incredibly useful, but there's, uh, to have flexibility with chaos is one thing. Having flexibility with the framework is another, right? So I work, I work with structure. I have, I have for me, what is just enough structure mm. because I've also been the person who like, I didn't start art geek zoo. Like I, it took me like, uh, the comic I made back in like 2008 through 2011 ish, 2012. Um, it was, I avoided making it uh, for, I don't know, six, eight months, somewhere in there, because I was doing all this world building, you know, and that's one of the habits where it's like, Oh, I want to manage all the risks. I want to make sure I've thought through the things and where does the magic come from? And, and what's the history and who's the, you know, like, okay, you just, you don't have to do all that or unless you really need to for your story. Um, and that's, I think that's the same urge to try to get rid, squeeze out all possible risk by combining this 
forecasted future and then this guarantee when I've you've created the plan and the mechanisms to to to, to guarantee. Yes, that can help, but look at this project. It's at the scale of one person, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, so you can think of factors where am, am I am I being cavalier with the risk by not adding all the structure? Am I adding no structure? No, I'm adding a little bit. And I do like to play the I like to role play the person like when I'm on a team where I'm like, haha, I don't have to plan. And I'm totally planning, you know, I'm, I'm planning behind the scenes and I, <laughs> but, but I do just enough, like have a framework to then work within and be flexible. So mm -hmm. that's such as it is. I think we, we, you know, you, you interviewed and, and helped me, uh, unpack a little bit of what that's the framework as it is today, but it'll evolve. I'm so, I'm so wondering like what, um, like this topic seems to be um, almost a bee in your bonnet in a way <laughs> where it's just like, it totally like, uh, yeah. like, well, it, like for instance, let, let's uh, imagine a scenario where you're like, ah, it's, it's a terrible idea to like, I don't know, uh, join a, uh, a band and travel the country when you're, when you're at a certain age or whatever. And you'd be like, mm -hmm. I would never do that. And then you have a friend that goes and does it and you're like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's a little bit like that. It's totally a little bit like that. Yeah. I, 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 I'm very enamored of the idea of committing a certain amount of time every day to a thing and showing up and doing it all those days. Like that, that sounds, it has that, that spirit of adventure in it for me. Um, so oh, Joseph Coco's throwing in, you can't completely manage risk and hope to have serendipity still. Yeah. I think that I think that's that that is a very concisely uh, expressed way of talking about. But I was kind of wrestling with this idea of like, you know, protecting yourself from failure. Um, so yeah, there, there's there's something that feels very romantic and adventurous about that idea, and um, I've toyed with it myself many times. Um, but. So I'm, I'm watching you in that sit with that same spirit of like, oh, I, I want to interview him the whole way through and find out what that's like, because um, where my life is right now, I don't feel very confident that I could manage it. Um, I think I think the cost would be too high considering everything else that I'm trying to accomplish and what I've committed to. Um, but maybe maybe in a year, maybe it's understandable. Years. It depends. Like I'm yeah. like, I looking at my chaotic calendar that we've, that we've talked about where you're mapping out the 24 hours and I have, a, I have a, a couple of small shifts during the day that I can put in some time and, and, you know, between supporting family and all that stuff. And then I've got some night shift and all that. And I've looked at like, you know, and the, and the earthbender time and the airbender time. And so like I write in airbender time. So that means it's, it's, uh, it's very interruptible. And, uh, I can squeeze it in, in a lot of different places. Right. So mm -hmm. if I'm waiting for something on the stove, I can pop up the keyboard and get a few thoughts down on a thing. Not a big deal. Um, the, you know, I still try to, pr I preserve, I try to not let this eat up too much earthbender time, but it, mm -hmm. it takes a little bit. So, um, mm -hmm. it's, it fits for my circumstance right now. So I'm like, I, if the, if I'm going to do this any year, it's right now, this year, this is a good year for it. So I, I get that. There's always context, right? So, hey, that well, works for someone else. It doesn't always apply to you. There's you another know? there's another aspect of what, you're, what we've explored today that feels like I would put the word romance and adventure on is that committing to something of generating ideas and that kind of schedule means that you can only dance around your demons for so long, right? You can only skirt the edges of that chasm for so long and eventually you're going to have to confront some of the big ideas that really matter to you and really try to untangle them and make them make sense. I think that's part of the part that I find really enticing. Like, it's like, Oh, I want to look into that chasm and I'm like, yeah, but you know, if you look into that chasm, it's going to have an enormous emotional cost that maybe you can't manage right now. Um, that, so I'm thinking about that too, right? It's not just the time cost. It's, it's an emotional cost that I, and we've explored this on two minute practice, not to create a segue, but this is something we've kind of explored in picking practices is we've kind of identified there's certain practices that cost more emotionally than we expected. And, and I don't attend to them as much. There were some I just didn't do because it was like, yeah, the thought of it just like, it was too, the resistance kicked in, you know? So it's a great way to characterize this. That's a, that is, um, 
a, a significant factor in this project is is feeling emotionally ready to do it. But also that's part of the framework is that I don't have to fight a difficult demon every day. But I do sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm cheering you on, Rob. Uh, I, 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 am, I am an ardent supporter of this effort, and I am. I hope that you won't mind checking in on it in the, you know, in a couple months. See how it's going. Mm. God, everyone, uh, good energy, fresh sandwich. Stay fresh, sandwich. Give me that energy. All right. <laughs> That's right. This is the part. So I, I do this game show every once in a while when I go, went back when we could do live events. And it basically it became the Super Comics Challenge video game show that I did recently. But like when I do it in front of a live audience and like I did it at Nerd Camp, uh, was it two years ago? Last time I was able to do it. And we had 500 kids in the audience. Right. And like the, ki- the, the contestants are all on stage drawing. And then like in the third round, I say like, OK. I don't know if you know this, but this is hard. It looks like fun, but sometimes drawing can be really hard. And coming up with ideas like out of nowhere takes a lot of energy. And I think our, our contestants need energy. So on the count of three, will you all please scream, we believe in you? And I go, one, two, three, 500 kids scream. And let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no drug like that. There really isn't. If you could oh. bottle that, you would be rich beyond all belief. Because like when I got hit with that way, I wasn't even the one they were cheering. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I could fight an elephant right now. <laughs> <laughs> so this is me saying to the leaders, if you could all... In all caps, tweet at Rob today. We believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Stenzinger on Twitter at tweet Rob. All caps. We believe in you. It'll do the same thing. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, and I'm not even. I'm not fooling everybody. Like that's for real. I really. Well, you know, I don't lie about that kind of stuff. So okay. How about? Thank you, Rob. Uh, Thank you for this discussion and for sharing your your process and your reflection, your experience. I think uh, my pleasure. Thank you. How about we talk about some two minute practice now? Okay, that works great. Two minute awesome. practice after an ad spot. Yes, I will not forget Perfect. to talk about some other people who make this show possible, and we'll let's talk about them right now. Those people are us. We make this show possible. We work on all sorts of different things. We think really hard about them. We practice them. And then we bring all that thought and practice and reflection into this project called Lean Into Art. And the thing that I make that I hope you will check out is the 4 Million Years Later podcast at 4millionyearslater.com. is a story analysis show where the subject is the Generation 1 Transformers cartoon, which I grew up with. I loved it as a child. I never fell out of love with it. Uh, But it's been a fun experiment and project to attend to it in a more thoughtful and, 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 and focused way. And the latest episode is uh, Prime Target, where writer Flint Dilly does the most dangerous game storyline with a big game hunter who wants the head of Optimus Prime. And it's one where Hoover and I both agree that we didn't have a lot of big feelings for this one as children, but it did trigger some interesting story analysis about this notion of masculinity. And what did masculinity look Mm -hmm. like back then? How do we feel about that now? And is there anything in the old definition of masculinity that is worth retaining? And I make the case that there is, right? Like I think, I think like, yes, he's a hunter. He kills animals. I ain't a big fan of that. Uh, but there's this whole like sort of uh, buoyant competitiveness and belief in fair play in the villain. And when the Decepticons show up to try to help him, he gets mad. He's like, don't take this away from me. I am taking Optimus Prime on one-on-one. This is my hunt. And I think there's something deep down in there that I think is actually interesting and worth considering so like, that's the kind of thinking that we get into and in talk about the show is like re also contextualizing it in the time it was in and looking at it through the window of a you know a modern lens in the wake of everything that's been happening in the last decade so uh i think really hard on this show and i i hope that if you enjoy the thinking i do and lean into our i lean into our i think you'll enjoy four million years later at four million years later.com so it is a right. wonderful project thank you i uh I, I seriously, I'm a huge fan. I literally listen to uh, almost every episode twice. So <laughs> it's a fantastic companion. So, um, so let's, um, let's say I, I, I've got ways where you can support, you know, the work I do through, you know, products and, and things I sell. And you could always go to robstenzinger.com slash store to, to explore that. You can hire me as a coach. You can check out my workshops, all that stuff. That is important but not what I'm highlighting today. 
So you can go to interactive-storyteller.com and check out this, well, this whole thing that I'm, that I'm doing, 365 posts for the year 2021. And uh, those all appear in the blog of an interactive storyteller in the left column. But then when you go here, this is actually the home of where the Polytechnicast lives too. So mm. I've, there's a lot of stuff at interactive-storyteller.com for you to uh, for you to explore and check out. So um, I think you will have uh, some a good time reading reading some articles, whether whether it's about stuff I make or um, stuff I'm dealing with a, as a concern of, of the the writing or just philosophy and feelings. So go ahead and. Uh, check it out and you can go always hit explore blog art archive way down the page to 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 dig deeper but mm. um yeah interactive-storyteller.com that's interactive. my blog <laughs> and you'll also find the unblocking project there um you can mm, also dig yep. those archives which we talked about today all right the last thing we hope you will check out is the lean into art discord we have a forum now and there are public channels and there are patreon only channels the invite link to the discord is in this episode and every episode uh would love to see you there um talk with us in a time shifted manner where it's not just comments attached to a video or to a blog post but it's free form like well it's it's private social media essentially and that's one of the things i really love about it so the lean into art discord. So, okay, it is time, I think, to talk about this thing that we call the two minute practice. Oh yeah. Two minute practice time. Hi, Jersey. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi, Rob. I am well, uh, and I practiced and I'm ready to talk about the practice that I did. Uh, d did you, did you practice? <laughs> I feel like I'm at the end of that Billy Blanks video. There's a Billy Blanks video where at the end he says, like, I sweated. I hope you sweated, too. <laughs> like, yeah, I did. Thanks, Billy Blanks. He, he's also <laughs> top of mind because of that Geico commercial that's recently popped up. Oh, I yeah, love he has. He showed up again in uh, pop culture. <laughs> um, so, oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's what we do. We, we show up. We do the practice. We show up. We look, you know, we look at how, how all this whole thing is going. And I, I did practice. Mm -hmm. Um. It wasn't like a, a whole lot of sessions, but, uh, but, but, you know, this thing that we, we committed to do this last two weeks, we're on two week cycles. Now we, we used mm -hmm. to be doing this every week and, and it's, yeah, it, it, it's a little, we, and we talk about tuning things for emotion and, and having a good balance of, of, um, well, I guess th engaging with something without, but not making it, you know, like a, this arduous you know, difficult thing to, you know, disrupt your emotional state. Um, so two weeks is, I mean, that's been a good flow. Um, mm -hmm. and what we committed to doing is just, um, a low pressure prompt to wonder about, uh, goals just through your wondering, uh, see what comes out. What do you care about when the word, when, when you think about goals and, uh, and the big, the intent behind it, it's to make it low pressure is that it's not about saying, what are your top goals for your whole life and the this whatever it is it, it just just let it out like who knows goals yeah. can be pretty small too so mm -hmm. uh, how did it go for you uh it's funny like that 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 framing of just wondering about it uh gave me the permission to approach it in a I think a more lighthearted manner, yet I still wound up doing like the work of thinking hard about my goals and thinking about what's necessary to make those goals happen. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I, I showed up with the pre-thought of in December, I was doing a lot of like really hard thinking about like, what is 2021 going to look like for me in terms of what I've already committed to. So I had, I had like a sort of a pre-filled basket of just pick a pick out of this basket and think about it for a second. I didn't have to wonder too long, but what did happen is because since I was, I didn't have a, um, structure, a pre-made structure showing up to this thing or a sense of, um, solemnity walking into thinking about it, but thinking in a playful way, I just like grabbed like some just yellow notebook paper and I just wrote the goal. I said, what do I think about next? And automatically this, this, this sort of like mind map of chained thinking began where like, I'll, like I started like mapping dependencies, uh, for the goal. Like, so, you know, it's like, well, I'm going to cover up some of my goals because I don't see all of it, but like, like some of the things became very interrelated and like, and the two minutes gave me just enough time to brainstorm some ways like, okay, when I write this word, like, um, uh, okay. 
active marketing to existing contacts, right? That was one of the things that came out of like, okay, well, in order for that goal to happen, this is one of the, this is one of the actions that would ha- naturally need to happen in order to make that goal happen. I'm like, okay, well, what does active marketing to existing contacts look like? And all of a sudden more chains started popping up. Okay, well, mm-hmm. when I say this, what does that mean? You know, so it became a sort of informal interview with myself where I feel like I got... I did like th- three sessions and I feel like I got a lot of work done <laughs> on, on actually like figuring out my, my goals and my, my strategy uh, for, for the first part of this year. So it was, it was actually pretty darn literally in six minutes. You went, you basically did a uh, really, named, real, you know, pretty good goal planning. You're saying I, 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 uh, I named three major goals that I have for this year. Well, I take it back. One of them is for two years from now. Um, and so two were for this year, uh, and two of them took a very strategic line where it was like, okay, if you want that to happen, these things need to happen. The third one, this was interesting, it was more of an abstract goal, is I want this thing I make to have this quality to it. And that one became a chained conversation with myself of me saying, do you really want that? Let's examine what that means when you say you want that, right? So that became like a more of a therapeutic conversation. So I, there were there were there were concrete goals where I want this uh, outcome, and then there was more like one softer goal where it's like I want this to have this quality. Does that make sense? Uh it it does. I mean, yeah, goals. I mean, that's it can have a very different you know different feel or nature. Um, I like to think of some broad brush about goals being you have some that are like a like a, in a, a like a threshold, an event, an accomplishment in particular that has a, a granularity to it. But then there um, and which may be made up uh, and contain many goals within or just be one thing. But then you have um, those that are are like it's just a ha- like a way of being. It's, you know, do you mm-hmm. do you want to have this habit and do it a lot and you know, you want to wake up early every day. All right. That's a goal. And, and it's, a, it's, but it's this, this ongoing thing. And it's just like this, it's a, you know, I look at it as a way of being. Um, and so, um, I think it makes a lot of sense where the different kinds of things that you described came out. And then you can think about the function of the goals or what job does it have to do for different areas of your life and all that kind of stuff. And, and that's, it sounds like that happened pretty, I don't know, pretty naturally. For you. Yeah. Well, the interdependency between the goals or the self-supporting uh, between the goals was not explicitly explored in the two minutes. Um, it was okay. more of it was the dependencies of the different actions that would lead to that goal that became very apparent very quickly. Like the moment oh. I started naming them, I saw how they would reinforce and build on one another. So that was the the the, the good work that I was like surprised to find. Um, and I mean going back to like part of like the ethos of the two minute practice, I think that part of what made this work for me and made it feel very like, uh, surprisingly joyful was the low cost that I put up in the front by saying, I'm going to wonder about it. I'm going to wonder about it. I'm not going to walk in with any explicit intended outcome. Um, let's see what happens when I write down a goal and just wonder about it on paper. So. Mm. I, there has to be something to this, the whole like, Mm, lower the, lower the risk. I mean, it reminds me a lot of, well, you know, facilitating collaborative sessions with, with folks. And it's like getting in the process of thinking about a thing. If ever, if you're always tied up in the, in the high stakes of, of like, well, I've got this big thing that must happen. And, and, um, it's, I, it almost creates too much, um, too much risk to, to play and try and explore and, and, uh, you know, create a, sh- uh, a picture and stuff around it where, yeah, I mean, I, I got a lot done in, in a few minutes too. I, it's honestly, this was, I only did two sessions. Mm. And one of the reasons why I only did two sessions is because I'm like, I, this is, I'm good. Like <laughs> this, <laughs> this is what came out is, is, is a decent, um, way better, uh, brainstorm than I ever expected right? just to sit down for, two, you know, I, and I guess maybe it was the the flexibility and the openness and the whole, Hey, don't worry about it. Just wonder. I don't mm-hmm. know. But yeah. it, it, that's, uh, it seemed to be helpful because, uh, it was low pressure. And so I, um, let's say, I don't know. It's not 
uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and share the video. What the heck? Or the the image. So okay. if I do, here's here you go. Boom. There's some. Oh, weird. Because I have my. Uh, it, <laughs> I've got my green screen effect turned on, so it's looking kind of messed up. What if oh, I funny. hid that? Nope. All right. So my my uh, sticky notes look weird because I have orange ones and green ones, and the green ones look weird because of my OBS thing. Anyway, so the oh, videos. Oh, I thought I thought you had black sticky notes that you were writing with white ink on. <laughs> uh, I have goth sticky notes, uh, like <laughs> stacks of them. It, it they it's, get me it's in not right. a phase, Rob. It's not a phase. No, it's honestly goth rocks. It's whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm being, uh, I'm riffing and joking here. So um, <laughs> the orange stickies came out of one two-minute practice, and the green ones came out of, or the goth ones, for those on the video, came out of um, a second practice. So what I did is I, I looked at, well, what are the goals? Let's Let's wonder and get them out. And I didn't think about why or what makes them important or what have you, or, or what what needs to happen in the world for that to, to, you know, come to pass. That's, that was the second session. So, mm. uh, I covered a landscape of goal ideas for the first session and the second one I, I elaborated on each. So I just would pick one, write a green sticky and I kept going and, and, uh, you know, I pretty much made it in two minutes. I was finishing a thought on the last one, but, um, <laughs> same, so, same. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that was another quality of my experience was that like, uh, the, the, the timer would end and I would be like, just give me one more second. You know, I, so like, <laughs> I, I felt, I felt very active in this practice. I wasn't waiting for the clock to run out. Um, that, okay. Well, an interesting other meta about two minute practice is that sometimes we, we, we do push past the, 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 the timer going off. Um, just a little bit. I don't try to cheat too bad, but, um, okay. So the, the first, I noticed a pattern in, in the different goals. I mean, it has to do with family and fitness and community and, um, you know, professional commitments and, um, a little bit of like how that could come about. So I've got journal and reflecting and sharing the process. Um, I've got, uh, and, and like, you know, here I am doing the, uh, this this 2021 project of blogging every day so that's happening um chit chat more i've been wrestling with the whole um honestly the like this is a whole separate topic but this like showing up in different um even private online communities of uh, on discord and slack and i just freeze up i don't know what the heck to say or talk about whatever so i've got some ideas of what i want to do there and practicing in public um finish more big projects so I've got the, you know, I've got the big categories of projects. I need to make sure that I'm, I'm getting them done, even with the chaotic schedule. Um, so uh, I really have an urge. Like one of them I lit out where this is one, I don't know where it fits, but it's like collaborate and, or well, I don't, how do I describe this one? Because the words came out as a hodgepodge, right? So it's not all refined and stuff, but it's the idea of, of, professionally collaborating. I like, I don't just want to work slow solo and I love working on lean into art, but I also want to work together on different projects too. Right. So mm -hmm. how could I maybe grow or lead or, or help make a guild happen that helps with profitable work for me and others? This is one of those goals that I would have filtered out maybe if I wasn't doing this just as a, Hey, what just wonder, let the stuff out. Mm -hmm. That one just popped out and you know, it's interesting. Um, and anyway, so more fitness, drawing and streaming. Um, and then of course help my kids and, and wife, uh, have a healthy home life. So there you go. That's the goals. And, and then I did expound on them a bit, uh, with the, how that, how they could look, what, what the, how could I see that this has happened is, is it another way to look at those other sticky notes, but yeah, there you go. And mm. I'm surprised how useful this practice was. I you know, didn't see that coming. Cause you say like, well, think about something super important for two minutes and is what's going to come of that. And evidently. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm about to dive into an outline on another book and the, every book feels like there's like an enormous pressure at the outset to dive in and start just outlining it because I want to get it right. And I really feel like this practice has like brought back to giving me more presence of mind to remember that 
Well, how about instead of like outlining the book, you wonder about the book. What if you just wonder about the book for, for a page or two and see what comes out of it? Um, you have evidence that, you know, you, you're, you're processing this stuff behind the scenes and the ideas will reveal themselves when you st start committing lines to paper, right? Um, mm, I, I, that is interesting. This does point to the idea that um, you've got more in you if you mm -hmm. allow it to come out. If you allow it to come out, that's the thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I apparently have been thinking really hard on some of these these things, but I just putting it on paper in a semi-relational way where I'm having like po arrows pointing between the things that are related to one another gives me a starting point to do some due to some of the important putting air quotes around it uh thinking around it right <laughs> which is mostly just feeling worse about it, <laughs> Makes it <a> <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the word important is this person standing over you and looking very disapprovingly at everything you're committing to paper <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but that's a, those are useful uh, w um, aspects of creativity too. Like you mm -hmm. know, being you know picky, judgmental, all you know, working in criteria, finding interesting combinations, all useful stuff, and you mm -hmm. know, more expensive than that initial letting things out, right? But yeah. um, um, if they show up first, it can make a process um, not cover a lot of ground for yeah. you know as as quick as it could. Um, so I love that reminder of, of this kind of thing. Uh, and I, and it's like, why, why would I expect it to, to, I expected more trivial ideas to come out and yep. I thought it would be fun, but important ideas came out quickly. So that, uh, yeah, something about this. Well, what do we want to do next? Um, I, it, w with the caveat that like, I have no expectation that the next practice will be as energized, right? Um, it, mm. it, the, the, the practice of selecting practices is, is a practice itself in that we are experimenting and guessing and forming hunches on what would be a fun thing to do and then doing it and then coming back and talking about whether or not it was. So would you like to do like a f workout physical practice? Hmm. I, I need it. <laughs> someone. All right. So. Somewhere in the early days of the of the brainstorming two minute practice stuff, I don't remember who said it, but um, someone was like, "Oh, like a two minute plank sounds really, you know, that, that's not that sounds like it'd be super hard. Don't do it or whatever." And yeah. and I was like, "Well, uh, what if we just did a plank for as long? Do do uh, planks for two minutes, as many as we can, right? Like if you need to yeah, stop, and exactly. Take a yeah, yes, a uh, plural yeah. planks. You know, planks. if you do one plank for two minutes, rock on, <laughs> but." Or, or okay. name, name your physical thing that you would like to in, in put into your, your regimen, practice some physical thing. Like, even if it's like, you know, we've talked about stretches before, if you didn't yep. get to play along with that one, you could do that one. Do, if you want to lift something kind of heavy, not too heavy, you know, we're not doctors, mm -hmm. but. Oh, no, exactly. We're not doctors. So, right. And not to be ableist and assume like everyone can do planks and all that kind of stuff. Cause I've been in business meeting where everyone's like, all right, let's get down and do a plank. I'm like, this feels very tech bro for one and <laughs> hackles are up and yeah. uh doesn't feel very inclusive so yeah. what is your equivalent right so yeah. that's you know so it's this balance of like being you know having a uh you know flexibility and inclusivity but also specificity of yeah so mm -hmm. yep okay so yeah and then if you participate in the two minute practice please join us in the discord and share your experiences in the uh what, what channel is that that is the challenges quests channel um, good place you know, for it. Yeah. Yep. We got a place for you to talk about that. Share your experiences and you know, we can bring those experiences into the show if you give us permission to do so. So, all right. I am excited to give it a try. I know that I need to do that is something where, uh, I'm not allowing that time into my life right now is to do something that's like, just like gentle and physical, but yet has some rigor to it. So mm -hmm. looking forward to coming back and talking with you more in two weeks about it. Awesome. Thank you, Jersey. Thank you, Rob. Okay. I guess that's a podcast. We did it again. Our 343rd time. <laughs>
<laughs> so uh, we record the show weekly. We stream it live all over the internet, and uh, we collect it as a podcast at patreon.com slash leanintoart and leanintoart.com. Uh, thanks, everybody, who downloads, watches, and listens and participates in the chat uh, when we when we stream. And we'll be back next week with another episode. Until then, I have been Jersey Drozd of leanintoart.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger, also of leanintoart.com. And I'm Rob Stenzinger, places like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user lean into art and you can reach us via email at lean into art at gmail.com and remember leaners aren't wieners thanks for listening